Welcome to Gooseberry Homestead, Reba here. Well, I'll show you where all the plants ended up for now. I guess that should be the mantra to my channel. Where are my container pots gonna end up this week? Um, <laughs> so I got them all cleaned out. There's uh, dirt debris on the ground over here in this section. And uh, I'll show you what I ended up leaving along the fence cause I can handle a couple pots cleaning them off no problem that's no big deal but if I've got like all the pots that I had over there it's just gonna be a headache to have to clean out every other week or whatever so I don't even want to deal with that so I've moved them and my husband will mow close to them and then I'll just weed eat or hand weed around the pots um, uh, for the majority of the yard but now I don't have to worry if the neighbors mow or um, or weedy along the fence line. I don't have to worry about having to clean out every single one of my pots. Number one is when I do my videos, I don't want to have to be cleaning a whole lot of mess off of them. And so to ensure that I don't have to do that, I just moved them. So I'll show you the two, the three plants that I left along the fence and the reason why I left them. So I had moved those great bushes or vines I guess I should say right over here along the fence now we do have grapes developing on them and I did clean off most of the grass and grass seeds the best I could but it should be fairly easy to you know pick you know any grass that starts growing in them but they've already attached themselves to the fence line with their little tendrils so I'm leaving them for the season on the fence line over here. Mm. So this is actually a good spot to be growing them in the summertime. And then what I'll do is when, when fall comes along, I will clean them off of the edge of the, the fence line. And then I'll move them up under the edge of the patio just so slightly. Not fully like protected, but enough. So this one here is the flame seedless so it's going to be a red grape but you can see that it's already making its little grapeies on there and then this other one is a little bit further along because i had it in the greenhouse for a lot longer than the other one and this one is a um grape or a blueberry grape so this one is out of chico california and um, it needs heat to develop the um, to develop that blueberry flavor, which we just don't get the heat where I live. But it's still probably going to be a good grape. So I'm excited for this. And um, so it's been producing or it's been developing the grapes for a while. So they're coming along nicely and the fence will actually be great so I'll just make sure I have them up over in this area now in this pot right here I also stuck one of the branches that had broke off of the um, flame grape earlier in the season and it looks like it took because I've got new growth and it's green at the tops so now I've got a combination of three different grapes in this one here now well I've got two of the blueberry grapes and then the one flame so that's how that's looking so I'm hopeful for all of the goodness I'm hopeful for the cuttings that I did take because they were in the walkway right here when we would walk by I just didn't want my husband to accidentally break them and then feel bad about it um, when he's mowing and that sort of thing so I was just trying to keep the vines from stretching out into the walkway but in here my husband's little jalapeno plants finally getting a little bit bigger um, I really kind of miss living in grow regions where things just really take off. Since I've closed the greenhouse up, it's actually done a lot better. It's putting on more leaves and getting bigger. So that for this area, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to have a good sized greenhouse in order to grow all the peppers and tomatoes that I want to be able to grow. Um, that's just, it's just going to have to be that way. So in here, I've got a few things. I got my caper bush, and then I got the little grapevines that I'm rooting right now. 
and that came off those branches that were in the walkway and then I've got my white currant I just didn't want the bugs to eat all the berries and um, the birds to get them the bugs are eating the leaves on it but you know it is what it is um, all of my uh, gooseberries leaves are completely decimated too so there's that and then I've got my other pepper plants on this side and they are really loving have being in the greenhouse so that was the wisest thing I think I've done this grow season is move my pepper plants into the greenhouse here and move everything else out for the most part out into the garden. So I know that my figs would do really good in this little tiny greenhouse to get bigger, but you know, we'll just have to wait and see. All right. Now I did end up moving the elderberries right here. Now I was wanting to move the elderberries already before the grass issue. So I moved them right here because I think this is a good spot. They get lots of green. Let's see there's more grass bits here. I want to try to get as much as I can off because I mean they're just the leaves are just coated in them. Um, but uh, and like I said before in my last video once once the, once the Bermuda grass gets going in your pots, if you don't catch it in time, they can really just take over all the soil and really suck everything from your other plants. So it's important to try to be on top of that. And when I have a job and everything else that's going on in my life, sometimes those weeds are the last things on my mind. But I wanted to kind of stay ahead of the game this time if I possibly can. Um, that way when I see something pop in the pop up in the plants I can just get it out right quick and having them away from the edge of the fence line and not be buried back behind other plants that's going to ensure that so all of my elderberries are right in this section and I know I just planted them all together into these pots but um, I really want them to grow well so I'm just keeping an eye on them and if I don't see good growth on them I may just put them into some individual um, one to three gallon pots of their own so that's something I'm contemplating doing and um, they, I've got two in the middle here the red and the gold elderberry those ones are in their own container pots this one's got a lot of bark in it I really feel like it might need some extra soil because it's kind of low so we'll just see what happens and see how it grows it's not growing that vigorously right now and so it might need to be in a little bit more soil. So that's where these ones went to. So now when I do my videos, I can come in and show you how they're all doing. And so I'll just keep my elderberries in and around, or not in, but around my um, greenhouse from now on. So that is the plan for that. And then right here, I moved the El Lebanon cedar back out. It was up under the edge of the house because um, we were mowing the lawn the other day before, like a day or so before the 4th of July, so that the grass was down a little bit for that. And I did end up putting a couple of rose bushes at either corner of the patio. And as for all of the cardboard that's up under the edge of the house here that looks all trashy, that is going to be probably I'm probably going to end up burning that um, sometime today because um, the recycle bin's completely full. So I think I'm just going to burn that cardboard. And then I can put those garbage cans out on the curb. I have the lids for them. I'm just going to put them on the curb and let somebody let them be a blessing to somebody who's needing a garbage can or two or three, and um, just be done with them. And then. Um, my comfrey's all dried out. That was making the patio look all trashy too. Um, and now I can cut all the leaves off of it and grind that into powder so that I can use it um, as a form of fertilizer and nitrogen for my plants in the garden. So some of my fig trees are needing a little bit of extra nitrogen to make their leaves a little bit more green. So that was the whole plan for cutting that and laying it out. And so got a couple empty tote bins over there that need to be picked up. Once I get those all picked up and the igloo put away from camping and all that, <laughs> the patio is going to look 
way cleaner. <laughs> so there's really not that much over there. It just looks like a lot because they're bigger, bulky items. Anyways, so this area hasn't really changed right through here. And then I did just go ahead and put my raspberries right here that I had. Um, not enough space up next to the edge of the house here. So I just put them right here. And then I've got my items that are going to be for sale right here in the middle. And um, eventually they will be gone. Even if I have to mark them down a little bit on Marketplace. Um, my husband doesn't want me to have the stinging nettles because he doesn't like the stinging nettles. So I'm just going to, I guess, do like the dead nettles and go from there. I I do have some of the stinging nettle um, seeds, so later at another point, you never know, I might have them again. So <clears throat> it's not something I'm overly stressed about. just came with one of my plants a couple years ago. So this is ultimately where the rest of the plants that I had um, up along the fence line over there, where they've come to rest. Now I do need to top dress them. Some of them I need to add a little bit more soil to them because um, some of them were just needing soil anyways added to them because the soil had um, scrunched down some in the container pots. So I do need to add a little bit of soil to some of them already. Um, but yeah, so I've got my smaller blueberries in the front row and there are some for tasting. So I'll probably do a tasting video today um, and put it up maybe tomorrow. And, um, so I did see a couple ripe on the blueberry gold. I think it's blue gold over here. And then I thought I saw one in one of these other pots that's ready to be tasted. So I'll have to take a look and see. And then, um, I'm going to be trimming this out because you can't really see the blueberries because of them now. But, uh, Legacy looks like it's ripening up a little bit now. So I'll be able to taste test on that one soon. And I have so many more blueberries on the Patriot that I need to be harvesting. So I need to get those harvested. And now it's just really kind of hard to see what's what now because it's like a whole little forest over here. So um, I will be making a couple videos today and posting them up throughout the week. And um, But this is where I ended up moving all those pots. So, with that being said, um, you guys, uh, I will see you in another video. Comment, like, and subscribe. Click that bell button. As always, love what you grow. Grow what you love. Have a wonderful day, and God bless. Bye.